Welcome to another episode of my Mishmash Photo Talk, Photography Talk. Obviously, I need a better name. Leave a comment down below if you have a better name for this weekly, I'm going to be coming out on Fridays, Photography Talk. I'm hesitating to call it a podcast because I'm really not putting it out anywhere else other than YouTube right now. Um, so it doesn't really feel too podcasty. So, uh, this is just kind of a general talk, and I've done these before. A little bit of product announcements, a little bit of a discussion a little bit of reader questions. Tonight, a little different. I'm going to talk a little bit about photography news, and then the bulk of the discussion is going to be around photo sharing websites. Uh, I have, uh, I'm going to kind of just run through the popular ones, share with you my experiences, and we're going to jump right into that in a minute, so I won't say anything more than that. The bit of news I want to share is that all the websites were uh, really excited this week because there was evidence of an iPad Lightroom app Coming. Now, I was a little surprised by this, um, not that the app was coming, but how excited everybody got because Adobe did demo this last year. I guess we're getting excited because now we have evidence that it's getting very close. Um, and they demoed how it would work. Uh, that is all somewhere in Adobe's website. Um, they, it was at, I think it was at CS World. I actually don't remember where it was. But they talked and showed how you are going to be able to edit raw files on your iPad. You're going to be able to do metadata adjustments. I don't know if adjustments is the best word for that. You're going to be able to write to your metadata. You're going to be able to rate images. You're going to be able to caption, keyword, title, uh, tag, same as keyword. And um, that is all going to be synced back to your master Lightroom catalog. And you are going to be able to work on raw files. Now, how I imagine this will work is very similar to their smart previews, which was introduced in Lightroom 5 and is my absolute favorite feature of Lightroom 5. Because I work mostly on a laptop, there is, an, with an SSD drive in there, it's very fast, very nice, but it's very small. I'm not deep enough pockets to afford those big SSDs. They're very expensive. Uh, to get the larger sizes. Uh, and so I really cannot keep my entire photo library with me all the time. What Smart Previews allows you to do is when you download your images and I store them all on an external drive, you can make a smaller editable copy on your on another hard drive, in this case in the S on the SSD in the MacBook. You can edit those and when you plug it back into your external drive, it will sync across any of those edits. They're basically little DNG files, um, which is kind of a, which is a digital negative file. It is a more open source raw format than your proprietary Canon raw Nikon NEF files, etc. Um, and so that's a really slick feature. And so I imagine it will work very similar. It's going to generate these smaller files that get passed up to the cloud and down to the iPad where you can edit and then those changes are synced back either wirelessly live or if you're disconnected when you reconnect again. Question of price, the listing there was 99 bucks for a year subscription. That does not seem to be a great price. Uh, I'm be curious to see how this works out. I doubt it will be included in their 999 Creative Cloud uh, subscription. I would like to see it included in their bigger subscription model that you can get for, I think it's 30, 40, 50 bucks, depending on whether you have the education deal or not, that gives you access to all of their programs in the cloud. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't even included in that because they do have Photoshop Mobile for $4.99, and that little program isn't included in that bigger subscription, so I doubt that this will be as well, but it would be nice to see. So iPad, Lightroom app, and if you're really excited about that idea, but you don't like the idea of buying completely into Adobe's world, there are other programs that do this for you. Mosaic app um, will sync to your, is, it, is an app you can install on the iPad, and will sync your Lightroom catalog over um, and allow you to have these little previews that you can then have anywhere. And it doesn't allow any editing to the images themselves, but you can do the metadata, the rating, the tagging of the keyword, etc. Things like that. So that was just a little bit of news that I wanted to share. Um, and I'll have more news soon in the upcoming ones. We have a couple different photo shows coming up in the beginning of February, CP+. Uh, we'll see some announcements. The rumors right now, for Canon at least, is no big announcements beyond smaller DSLRs in this first part of the, or winter, first quarter of the new year. Um, the one everybody seems to be waiting for is when will the 7D Mark II be announced? 
and the rumors all seem to point to kind of a mid-spring release or announcement of that and not real sure about availability. I think there are a lot of people that are really holding their breath and hoping they have a long want list for this camera and I'm not sure it's going to satisfy everybody's wants and usually how it works out but especially Canon. They really, those marketers say, well, we're going to hold this feature to the Mark III, we're going to hold this feature to the next version, etc. So I think the next thing we'll see is probably a lower end refresh of the DSLR line. Does that mean a T6i? Possibly. It does seem a little early for that, um, but maybe more likely a refresh of the T3i. Uh, so we'll see. I don't have any inside information. Just guesstimating. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some photo sharing websites. We're going to run through. Um, I asked your opinions of 500 Pics, Flickr, Zenfolio, SmugMug, Facebook, and Google+. There are lots of others out there. You can make an argument for Instagram. You can make an argument for Photobucket, Imager, uh, and Snapfish Gallery, Shutterfly. There are tons and tons. But I, the first ones that I mentioned, I'm just going to hit on those. Those are the bigger ones with a kind of a big feature set, pretty big following and subscription base. So let's take a look. All right, so the first one I want to talk about is Flickr. This has kind of traditionally been your go-to place for a long time. It was the largest photo sharing website. It's now been replaced by Facebook for that. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but they had a recent refresh. Uh, it's kind of a whole kind of Marissa Meyer coming in, really changing the way Yahoo is working. Uh, Flickr really felt like it was just kind of wallowing and not making any forward progress. Lots of other sites were coming around, 500 pics with a really re fresh look, and Flickr was just very stale feeling. Well, they did a refresh. They completely changed their model. You're now looking at one terabyte of space, which is kind of funny. They might as well say unlimited. One terabyte is huge, but it, it isn't the same as unlimited. But for most people, yeah, it is. Um, you can store really large files, the originals, but there is no uh, mechanism for storing raw files. Uh, and that one terabyte is completely free. And, you know, as I said, Facebook has surpassed them in the number of photos being shared, the number of photos. But really, this is still the largest photo-centric community of folks out there. And hearing from you all, that's why a lot of you are still here on Flickr, because this is where those groups are. And I can switch over to the Groups tab here. Um, a group that I administer. Just a quick note about this, uh, I am going to start doing some uh, kind of quick critiques. I'm going to try to do that at least once a week, starting sometime in early February, uh, and I'll, I'll be sharing more about that soon, but your photos will need to be in this group at least at the beginning and tagged, and I'll have some information about that. Uh, so if you're interested in having seeing some getting some feedback on some of your images. But again, that's what I heard from you all, is that you like the kind of communities here, the feedback that's happening. And you can see that some of these groups are huge, 139,000 members, almost 3 million photos in that Canon DSLR user group. Uh, and some of these groups starting, like I said, are starting to feel, like Flickr in general, a little stale. Uh, I've seen you go into some of these and the most recent post was two, three weeks ago and the one before that was a month or two ago. But there are a lot that are very active still with multiple discussions um, going on at the time. 73 minutes ago, five hours, six hours, six hours, six hours. So definitely some discussion happening in this very, very large group. So. Big pro, a lot of photo-centric folks here, um, and you can get feedback, you can interact with people, you can really build up a following on Flickr. Um, it still does that very well. The Explore page is fun. This is kind of this new, fresher look where it's just kind of this infinite scrolling. You can just start scrolling through. They do have some ads on here. If you pay them $50 a year, they will remove all ads that you'll see, and so you have a much cleaner look and you can send people to your portfolio. And you've got a real mix on here from really nice shots to just, hey, it's kind of a snapshot at the zoo. Um, well, still got 99 plus likes. As I said, you can really build up a following, and even if the photo isn't the most amazing photo, um, you can have a lot of feedback and a lot of interaction with people around that. So that's pretty cool. I still find, even though they've done this refresh, I still find their, their, their interface to be um, kind of clunky. And when you get into an image, you click it, and you, know, you have this nice info over here, I like this. 
you can come in and um, actually I don't know what that oh that's just the rest of your photo screen you can see your tags uh, and these are automatically added tags I have uh, usually Instagram dump into my Flickr as well but that information is all there and you can see that some people like that hitting escape will take you back out of that but it still doesn't, it's not my favorite organization scheme. And there isn't a whole lot of customization that you have available to you through Flickr. Uh, you kind of work with what they have, the layouts, the looks, but you can put things into sets. And um, I actually don't even, haven't even played with creation. Oh, that's their photo books. So they want you to go get some photo books for them. Uh, one of the things that is really nice about Flickr, and I use this a good bit for when I'm about to go off to a place for the first time, is kind of exploring through their geotagged images uh, locations that might be fun to stop and shoot at. And so you can go to the map. Here I am kind of zoomed in on southern Vermont, my home area. And I can just click on a dot to see the image that was made there in that spot. And that must be this hungry little squirrel. Uh, maybe we'll find something more interesting up here in Townsend. Well, that looks like an orchard oriole or some similar bird like that. So that's a great way to um, explore and use it. And also Flickr, as I said, was huge for a long time and still is, and has a really neat database of which cameras are being used to upload images to Flickr. And so you can actually see that the Apple iPhones are really high end, uh, really up there and it's really interesting to see the iPhone 5 versus the iPhone 5s and um, it's shot up there as long as the and the 5s um, right about the same time it's percentage of members using that overall the number one is Canon made up of multiple models the T3i which sold very well for a long time and is still selling very well the 5d mark II again selling very very well and the 7d and then you can see Apple's next, followed by Nikon. So this is neat. And, you know, this I've had people say, I look at all of the Flickr pictures taken with T3Is, and they, are, they look like X to me or Y to me. It's really hard, though, to make judgments about a camera by looking at this. It's more just kind of fun to browse uh, because you have no idea how post-processed these images are, and you have no idea what lens they were taken with. So it's, it's, it's hard... <laughs> for me to agree when people write and say, uh, make some kind of generalization about a certain camera based on Flickr, but it's still fun to see those all listed out there. You can put video clips up on Flickr too, but it's almost not worth mentioning because they're super short, what, like 15 seconds? Uh, Flickr called them moving pictures and they've never done anything more with that. It might be a little bit longer than 15 seconds, but it really, you very rarely see that. It's not what it's used for, but they're there. So the next website is 500 Picks, and I mentioned this when I was starting to talk about uh, what when Flickr was looking stale. 500 Picks came along and was really impressive. Uh, a lot of other websites have kind of redesigned themselves now and look similar, so 500 Picks doesn't stand out quite as much as it did when it first was released. Um, but this really does feel like a place for photographers with a capital P, maybe I even call them professional photographers, to share their best images. Not so much a place for you to share your baby pictures or a snapshot of flowers in the backyard, although you certainly can do that. Um, the free version of 500 Pix gives you an option to upload up to 20 images a week. And so right there, I like that. There's this kind of pressure of, you know, you're probably taking more than 20 pictures a week you're gonna pick your best ones to upload and to share here. Uh, if you wanna pay 25 bucks um, a year, you get unlimited uploads and you get these sets for organizing uh, and you get a little bit more um, customization there. $75 a year, you can get a subdomain. So, you know, it can be toby.500pix.com uh, and uh, you get some statistics and you can put Google Analytics on there to see who's looking at pictures, what countries they're coming from, um, and all of that. All of the options do allow you to sell in their marketplace. I'm really mentioning this because this is something I hear from beginners often. They say, I wanna start selling my photos to make money. Very, very rare. I did a little bit of research on the 500 Pix marketplace uh, before making this and found that even the top sellers are really not making much. But just in general, folks are not going to buy your nice sunset picture. 
Um, there is very few, there's a very few number of photographers that are making money in these kind of general open marketplaces uh, with their pictures. Uh, that's just not where images are bought and sold, uh, or sold, um, or bought. The uh, stock marketplaces like Shutterstock, iStock, um, you're going to have much better luck there, but still it's very unlikely that you're going to make any kind of real cash selling your images there. The, the, those markets are, are flooded, um, there is a lot of really high quality imagery available, and even when images do sell, it usually is for literally pennies, um, a quarter. What I did see what people said on 500 Picks, those who are selling were mostly selling digital downloads people were using as wallpaper, making two bucks an image, and one of the top sellers, one of the, in, in the top 10%, um, said they've made something like 25 bucks in the last month. So really pretty small amount. Um, that might sound like a lot to you, but it's not really sustaining. Um, and it doesn't sound like it's going to... There, It's not a growth market uh, because it's just so flooded. So I don't mean to be a party pooper about that, but um, really just print a nice sunset photo for your mom and be happy. Uh, don't think people are going to buy it. All right, what else did I want to show on Smug Mug? Um, you know, or sorry, with uh, 500 picks, the the um, the rating system is neat. And this was a comment from somebody else. These are this is my gallery right here. Um, apparently, I don't have a cover photo set. Uh, somebody said that the in the flow. Or actually, let's go to. Yeah, this is people. There we go. The popular. Um, it's it's pretty intimidating. I feel the same. So uh, that was a comment by one of you all. Um, in the uh, Facebook uh, thread that I had asked for feedback on these different uh, sharing sites. And a lot of you say you use 500 pics to share your best and then maybe link over to Facebook. Um, but it really does feel like this is a home of professional photographers. And again, there's nothing stopping you from putting up all kinds of images. And I've put up images that I'm happy with here. I really share kind of my best of my best here. And I think that's true of other photographers too. And there really are some amazing, amazing images. This probably might be one of the best places to go when you just want to see amazing images. And this was the marketplace, 500pixart.com. All right. Let's talk a little bit about SmugMug. I've actually been using SmugMug now for about seven years. I kind of feel locked in now, not necessarily in, in a good way. Um, what I loved about it at the time when I signed up was that it was cheap, um, relatively cheap, had really good customization, um, and the kind of organization scheme really worked well for me. Since then, they've gone through a refresh too to bring them much more in line with stuff like 500 picks and the newer Flickr. Um, they've also raised their prices a good bit. Um, and I don't feel like it's necessarily as good a value as it used to be. Uh, and I don't think, uh, for me, I was just using it as kind of a backup slash sharing place for family and friend photos. Um, and it's, it's where, and today it still is where all of my pictures that are worth keeping go. What has happened here is that they've changed the layout a little bit, as I said, um, and the customization in an effort to bring even more customization to you, it's really gotten quite complex. And I haven't spent a whole lot of time trying to figure it out, but I'll show you an example. Um, well, first off is this kind of dump on the home page now of your most recent gallery. I don't like that. I think I might be able to change that. But if I go into the browse, then I'll get my folders. And my folders are set up by years, and then within the years I usually have months and sometimes galleries that are organized within that. I can click this little customize button here and say customize the site or choose a new site design. So we'll look at that real quick. So I'm using a copy of a Willow design. You can scroll down and see their different designs. And again, um, some really nice designs here, some really nice photos that they're using as examples, which help make the designs look great. But for my friends and family photos, they don't work so well. Um, but somewhere in here is Willow, and right there. Um, but there's also this one as well. So let's, let's, let's just say done that. And let's go back to customize and customize site. And now I have this, this option over here of adding content blocks. They're pretty straightforward. Let's, oops. 
Let's go back to home. Oh, now I'm stuck in this thing. Let's say done. Okay. Done. Now say I'm stuck. Done. This card changes. What I really loved about Smug Mug is the keywords. And so you can see I started to try to recreate that down here. Keywords. And you used to be able to land on a page of all of your keywords. Now, 500 picks, Flickr, Smug Mug, Zenfolio, we'll talk about in a second. All of these plug in very nicely to Lightroom. Tags or keywords you put in Lightroom will show up in these uh, photo sharing places. Uh, Facebook does not. Facebook strips all of that out, which is annoying, and it's one of the many reasons why I don't think Facebook is the best place to share images, but there are still reasons why Facebook is useful. Um, but I used to be able to see that, and now not so much, and I've tried to, been trying to recreate that. But I can go in here still and say search. I'm going to search for all photos that I've tagged with tree, and here they are. So I've taken the time um, over the last seven years to tag pretty much every single image I've put up. Some of them I've done outside of Smug Mug, some of them I've done in Smug Mug, and so those images aren't necessarily actually tagged. Smug Mug has just done kind of a database matchup. Uh, but so here are all my images that are tagged tree. And I can then say, you know, all of the ones tagged tree minus leaf. I don't even know if that would change it, but let's see. Nope. I don't know if I did any leaves. 430. So there were three images before it was 433. There were three images of leaves. So you can do some complex stuff there and really kind of narrow down. And I love that. And I love that all my pictures are here and accessible from anywhere and can quickly pull up a tag. I have to remember tags now, though, whereas before I could see a whole page of them. And I did see if I go into a gallery, I can, um, I just recently added the tags for this gallery. But again, one time I had a page that was just hundreds of tags and I could go through and find the ones I wanted, which was um, pretty cool. So there's some bird answers in there. So, and you can see they're also tagged birds and tagged water. So, but there's one other bit in here that I was looking at. If we go to customize, no, we go to organize. So you can see then I have galleries by years and kids and I can go to I was working on this testing page or, uh, earlier so it says to customize this page visit it on your site so I can click it so I'm on this page now I click customize and I don't want customize site that's the whole site and do I want page settings well I go to page settings and that's very limiting I can really just do basics um, and set the security and privacy of Smug Mug. And now my Smug Mug is actually at this time completely locked down. It is just for friends and family and, and um, I'm fine with that. Uh, there, you know, one of the benefits of Flickr and 500 Pix uh, is that kind of community that I mentioned and, and some kind of social discoverability. There's the chance that people will come across your images and like them. And you can open up your galleries at Smug Mug and other places and people will maybe come across, but your likelihood is far lower than when you share on these more social oriented sites. Here's a quick glance at the Smug Mug plan. So basic $40 a year, that gives you, use unlimited, all of them have unlimited space. Uh, and, but where it starts to change is down here in your designs. Um, you don't have quite as many designs in using your own domain. So, so you can see I was uh, using my own subdomain there, T. Gilson Smug Mug. Um, and then what really separates the power from the portfolio slash business is commerce. Being able to sell, being able to set prices, being able to uh, collect a certain amount of profits, and your marketing is really business. And you can see those get really pricey though, $300 a year. There was a good bit of, there was a good outcry when the Mug Mug, they had not raised their prices for quite some time and then they really jumped up. Uh, a lot of people found that fairly jarring. Um, but this little kind of green bar here gives you a quick glance at, you've got some commerce options under the portfolio, but it's really under the business for $300 a year. This is really set up, and Zenfolio 2, we'll talk about that more in a second, is really set up for kind of working with clients. You're shooting, um, and then you want to provide your clients with a way to 
download images, buy prints, um, and that's really what. And $300 a year might seem steep, but if you're shooting a dozen or more weddings and you're going to make some print sales, that will pay for itself um, fairly quickly. But it really all depends on how you set up your packages, uh, event shooting as well. Um, so that's all there. Let's see, anything else that I wanted to say about smuggling? Looking over my notes, I think. Oh, and it does support video. Um, you can put up to max video size, three gigabytes, video clip lengths, 20 minutes, full 1080p. Um, so that's nice that that is offered as well. The other thing that I like about Smug Mug is that they offer a vault, a raw backup, and it's integrated into their system. It uses Amazon Storage Cloud, and I've been using it now for a couple of years. I have about a thousand raw images up there. It does not cost much. It's pennies per gigabyte. I think I pay something like four or five dollars a month. It's based on the amount of storage you're using, uh, and it's ta and and they're linked to your actual images. So you can pull up one of your JPEGs and say, "Oh, I want to get the raw back for this," and you can very quickly download the original or the JPEG. And so that's nice, and that that feature works very well, and I do like that. Um, I use that kind of as a quasi backup for my really critical files. I don't put all my RAWs up here because that would get expensive very quickly. All right, let's talk about Zenfolio now. So you've got, let's jump right into the different plans with Zenfolio. You have the basic plus 30 bucks a year. You got four gigabytes plus two gigabytes for every year. You know, that might not sound like a whole lot when you're comparing it to unlimited with SmugMug, but really you're putting JPEGs up here. Even the very highest quality JPEGs are not going to be that large in file size. Um, the limit here is 36 megabytes per file. Your really high quality JPEGs, maybe 10 to 12 megabytes per file. So that's plenty of images plus two gigabytes for every year. Very easy, very easy to work with. Unlimited for 60 bucks. Um, and otherwise these two are kind of the same. You can use your domain though for the unlimited. I don't think there are many other differences. Otherwise those two are pretty straightforward. Oh, videos. You need to go up to the unlimited plan to be able to do videos. Um, premium and premium business is when you can start selling. And this is, I'm, I'm running the premium. Uh, I switched, or I shouldn't say switched because I'm still using SmugMug, but I was working several events um, a couple of years ago and uh, shooting those events for very cheap and knew it was going to make a lot of money on the print sales. I wanted an easy way and I kind of wanted a, a separate way from my personal images to sell all of these things. And I was also really struggling to figure out Smug Mug's print sales, plus it was a little pricey and a, f a friend photographer, f friend photographer uh, mentioned um, Zenfolio and how happy they were. So I gave it a try. I've been really happy with them. Christina now uses it for her photography business as well. Um, it's very easy to set print sales, uh, very easy to set different pricing for different galleries, um, and you can set up smug domains. That all works very, very nicely within Zenfolio. Um, and it still gives you a good amount of customization, but in a way that I find much more friendly. You do sacrifice some of that customization. You don't have quite as much as you do over uh, something like Smug Mug, but I, I like it. Um, uh, so here I am kind of on my home page, but in the uh, customized view, and I can go to my layouts and pick a different layout so that it will look completely differently. And just a couple clicks and it will do that for you. Um, and not just control over layouts, but you have control over the color scheme. And you can see that there's lots of different schemes there. And you can go to these kind of presets where they're just showing you, you don't get those colored boxes in your actual images. It's just showing you the kind of color scheme for those, but you can choose those and then you can choose a preset as well. 39 different ones. Again, you have to be at the premium or the business level um, to get this. One of the other things that I like about uh, Zenfolio is that you can have a blog page as well. It's very easy to do. Um, and I don't update this as often as I would like, but again, here we go, we can go to the layouts and uh, let's say instead of wide photos, I want single column. And so I can hit apply and then I'm gonna get my single column. 
Another thing about Zenfolio is that I feel it's just a little bit faster. I shouldn't say a little bit. There are times where it's noticeably faster than SmugMug, especially for uploading. I've uh, had, you know, been lucky enough to have some really good bandwidth at a couple different places, and I've tested out SmugMug and Zenfolio, and really seen a difference on their end, uh, and Zenfolio being the faster one. So you can see that I've kind of switched the mode of the blog now. And I just hit publish and say yes, publish those changes and know those are going to go out live and you can have you have those other updates as well. Uh, let's go back to edit view of the home page. Let's go home and click close. And so I, this is where I can upload, I can manage my photos, I can customize the home page, which you saw a second ago. Lots of good information right here. You can have these galleries and collections. It just, it as I said, a little simpler than SmugMug in some ways. Um, but uh, it works really, really well for me, and I've been really happy, and uh, I like it. And what was on the last thing? Blogs. So, we talked about that. Anything else I want to say about Zenfolio? Downsides, they do not um, have any kind of raw backup system like SmugMug, um, where I use the raw file vault to back up my raw images, uh, and no geotagging as well. SmugMug does offer geotagging, and that's being able to see your pictures on the map, as I showed in Flickr as well. Let's move on to the next one. So, or before I do, let's say I can I think SmugMug and Zenfolio really are kind of in this uh, category of their own. This isn't really a place that I say is the best place to share friends and family pictures right now um, because they're not cheap. Uh, I think you need to be making a little bit of money to, to get value out of these. You could certainly use them, and as I said, I'm using SmugMug for family photos, but I kind of feel locked in now that I have seven years of photos up there and a lot of tagging and effort has gone into it, so I'm going to keep using it for now. Um, but if I can figure out an easy way to get all of my tags and information out of there, I might move it all to something like Google+. Which, um, let's go to Photos. And so this is my personal Google+. Plus. Um, and a couple things are going on here. You're not seeing amazing images because I have auto backup set on on my phone. And so you're seeing cell phone pics um, that are automatically uploaded. And it's one of the really things that I love. Um, I hear these horror stories about these people that take all of their baby pictures with their iPhone and then their iPhone gets stolen and they've lost all of them. And now there's really no excuse for that. I do feel really bad for them. But um, there's PhotoStream on the Mac side and the iOS side. But there's also Google Plus. If you're running that app on Android or iOS, you can set it to automatically back up your photos. They are private to you. No one else sees them unless you make a video and show the people the page like I'm doing right now. Um, and you can see that's a good reason why, because I got a crazy cat picture here. Um, but those are just memories for me. And if anything happens to my phone, none of these pictures are lost. They are all here, which is really nice. Um, unlimited free space if you keep the file dimensions under 2048 on the long side, 2048 pixels. So that's pretty nice. And you can put bigger images up here and pay for more space. And it's reasonable, like five bucks a month for five gigabytes um, of space. And uh, I can't remember the other sizes as well. But let's go into the photo section. So then here's a dump of all the photos. But let's go to more and go to albums. And so this is um, albums. Some of these are automatically made by my iFi card as I'm uploading and was traveling. Some of these are made by me. Some of these are made by Dropbox. Uh, so there's a lot of different um, groups here. But really what I want to show you is my new niece. And let's go to highlights first. So this is now one of the concerns I heard from people with Google and Google Plus when I asked for your feedback on Facebook was... Um, Aren't you concerned about Google owning your images and Google owning everything? And, well, not really. I'm, I'm willing to give up most of those rights for really neat features like this, um, especially when the cost, the actual cost, is so low. Um, 96 photos are in this album, but you can tell Google, this is one of the neat features, to say, show me the highlights. Google picks the images that it thinks it should show to you, and then that's what you get. This is a really nice kind of filtering. It also does these auto awesome kind of little collage pictures. I didn't upload a two by two image here. Google did that from other images and said, hey, these are all kind of similar. Let me make them into a little collage or these three right here or these four right here. Now, I can click all photos and we can see all 96 and that also gives us access to these GIFs. I did not make these. Google auto awesome did. It said, hey, 
you've taken a quick series, not me personally, um, uh, Teva's grandmother, uh, a quick series of images, and they are similar enough with the background not moving enough that I'm going to stitch them together in a little gift for you. And I think that is pretty snazzy. So here she's pretty cute. This is on her first day um, just after she was born. She's pretty adorable, and I'm not at all biased because she is my first niece. So that's neat. Um, another thing that is neat is I can come up here to search my photos and I can say photos of me and these are not tagged with me but Google has seen other tagged images of me so it can now recognize my face. You might think that's creepy. I don't think that's creepy. I think that's awesome. Another thing I showed you on the Smug Mug was all of the tagging and keywording. I haven't done any of that here in Google Plus but I can search for tree and then here are my tree photos. How does Google know? Well, you notice it doesn't always do a great job. There might be, yep, there's the word tree in there. Um, it doesn't always do a great job, but this is similar to when you do a general image search on Google Plus for something like kittens. Um, Google returns images of kittens uh, because it's brilliant. It's pretty simple. Um, not really brilliant, but the amount of information contained in Google databases allow it to be able to recognize images um, or read captions um, or tags and things of that sort. But as I said, I haven't really set any tags for any of these. These are just images that were either uploaded automatically um, through the iFi card or uploaded through the iFi or through the Google Plus backup. So uh, another kind of neat thing is that it will accept raw files. It won't store that full version for you, but you can throw up a raw file. It will create a nice um, viewable copy. And again, using that auto awesome highlights, um, sorry, not auto awesome highlights, but auto awesome um, will kind of, you know, raw files usually don't look great straight out of the camera, but a little sharpening, a little uh, additional saturation, and it can look quite nice. Finally, Facebook. Now, what I heard from a lot of you was that Facebook is not um, your favorite place to share images, but you do it because that's where your friends and family are. And why do we share images? For our friends and family to see most of the time. Those of you said, I want to share for the greater, the larger audience, a lot of you said Google Plus is where you want to share those images. Why not Facebook? Well, Facebook does a lot of sharpening to your images, a lot of compression, and a image that's already just perfect can end up looking pretty crummy on Facebook. Um, and they, it is the largest now database of images, uh, personal images shared. And so the amount of space kind of boggles the mind that all of these images take up. So Facebook is trying to walk that tight balance between having a bazillion and a half hard drives uh, to store all of this and to keep relatively decent copies of your images. But they really are um, trying to save money right now compressing the crumb out of your images and so it's not great. Another thing that Facebook does, you've got some privacy concerns here as well. Their terms of service is really sketchy as far as are these images yours or are they Facebook's? They are available for Facebook to use. Um, so that's, that's concerning as well and it strips out all of your metadata. As I said, Zenfolio, SmugMug, Flickr, if you've taken the time to caption keyword and tag those in Lightroom or some other similar program and you upload to those sites, that all information stays there. But when you upload to Facebook, it strips all of that out um, and it's just frustrating. It's not the best way to share nice galleries of images other than the fact that your friends and families are here. So another option is hosting images on your own galleries like Coppermine, WordPress, Squarespace, all that's not really on your own. Those are all options really on your own. A couple of you said you're going that route. It does give you an infinite customization, um, but the downsides are you're going to have to worry about um, spam, security, keeping up with patches. Uh, and so, you know, those are trade-offs and some people are absolutely willing to do that and it works very well for them. Another uh, difference with hosting on your own is that kind of social discoverability. When you're sharing on Flickr, as many of you said, uh, Google Plus, 500 pics, uh, there's a good chance that people are going to stumble across your images and see them. And when you host on your own site, those, those options are uh, far less. One of the questions that I had that I think is appropriate to this discussion is, should you watermark your images? So first thing I think everybody should do is if you're using Lightroom or another similar program that allows you to write into the metadata, and actually your cameras can do this as well, um, there is the spot to write in your custom 
uh, copyright information. You can do it in the camera. Uh, that's available to you. Uh, you can do it in Lightroom. Uh, and when that goes up everywhere, it should contain that information built into the file. Now, that doesn't necessarily keep somebody from stealing your image. So should you put a watermark on it? Well, I think this is really a personal opinion. My general opinion is um, no. They, they just don't help. Uh, they either have to be big enough to really discourage people and then they just kind of end up making the image look cheap um, or they're kind of small and don't necessarily do a whole lot. But I don't really have a, a problem with a small uh, kind of subtle watermark somewhere on the images uh, so that people know who took it at a glance without having to look into the metadata. Um, but I do kind of find it humorous at times when I see an image that no one is going to want to want that has a giant watermark across it. It just doesn't seem appropriate. So that's, it's a personal opinion. Um, if someone wants to steal your image uh, and you have a large watermark across it, it's going to certainly stop them from doing that. Um, but then at the same time, I, one of those events that I shot that I used Zenfolio for, I had watermarked images and uh, some of the folks who were at the event still took them and put them up as their Facebook profile, even with a watermark across them and they were smaller. So I think the best thing to do is to keep your file sizes smaller so no one's going to be running out and making prints of your images. And if they want to republish them, um, that's certainly crummy, but there's, uh, it's, it's difficult to stop people from doing that. So I didn't really answer the question. It's pretty much up to you. I don't really see a whole lot of use of those big old watermarks, especially the ones that are fancy with big curls and things like that. Um, if you want to put a small one on there, I think that's fine. So this was a long discussion. If you watched the whole thing, thank you. Uh, and if you have any questions about photo sharings, if you'd like to share your personal favorites still, uh, I'll keep track of those and kind of share out from time to time. And um, as I said, I'm going to start photo critiquing from the Flickr group. So if you would like to see your images critiqued in an upcoming video, you can put them in there and keep an eye on the Facebook page. Yes, you got to follow Flickr and Facebook now. Um, and I'll tell you what to tag them with for each of the weeks that we critique them. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe.